So one of the ways to make gardening really easy and take really little time to grow a ton of food in a small space is to grow high yield crops that grow again and again for you after one planting. And that's what I call cut and come again crops on the farm. For those of you that don't know, I'm Zach Buckle. I am a market farmer here in Cody, Wyoming which is a zone 4B, 5A climate. And we grow about $100,000 worth of vegetables a year on a half an acre of growing space. This is our first year we're gonna be reaching that. So the farm's gonna be growing more and more every year from here on out. But right now that's what we're projected to hit by December 31st of this year. So this strategy is a huge way that we make that kind of income on a small land base is by growing lots of crops that regrow and continue to produce food in a small space again and again after one planting. So that's what I'm gonna go over today. I'm gonna go over five main crops that are really easy to start off with as a beginner and Hopefully this provides some value for you in your gardening journey. If you are interested in growing a whole garden in this style, I have a gardening course link in the description called Gardening 101, where I go over all of these kinds of strategies and a lot more in a seven hour video course. Highly recommend you check that out. Let's get into it. So celery is one of the most underrated, what I call cut and come again crops. And I think most people don't know about it because there's not that many farms that do this yet. But <clears throat> once you're able to grow celery, a great trick to double or even triple your yields in the same space is to do exactly what I'm doing right here. And that's take off the outer stalks of each plant. And then in three weeks, this will regrow into completely new celery. This celery has not been picked yet. I just picked this head. This head was picked last week. It's already regrowing. And in about two weeks, it'll be just like this. So that keeps an assembly line of food going in your garden. And all you got to do is make sure you water the crap out of it on a regular basis because uh, it does need a lot of water compared to other crops, but it's easy. And the, the real challenge with celery is just starting it. You got to start it all the way back in March. But once you do that and you got the plants, it's a really productive crop, even in a garden. So this is one of the big money makers for me on the farm, but it's just as productive in your backyard. So highly recommend you give it a shot. All right, and just to give you an idea on the timing on how fast this stuff regrows, this celery right here, all this first row was picked two weeks ago. It was picked completely down to the very last growth tip and it's already almost regrown. In one week, this will be ready to pick again, just as big as this. That's how fast this can work if you keep water on it. So really big one you could get two to three crops out of one planting with celery if you get it in the ground early enough get it mature early enough you know if i planted this outside in june and it's mature by right around september 1st that's a guaranteed two crops i could pick it in september 1st just like i'm showing you here and then by september 21st it would regrow into a whole nother celery head that I could harvest whole or just do what I'm doing and grab the outer stalks. And you don't even have to grab as many as I'm grabbing. You know, you could grab like three or four stalks if you just need three or four for a recipe. You don't have to grab all of them. It'll just keep producing exactly what you need for you. I only do it this way because I need to, you know, I need a hundred bunches today, a hundred pounds of celery today. So I'm harvesting every last bit, but you don't have to do that. You could harvest this many if you need to. Super versatile crop, and it is absolutely delicious. So much better than the grocery store. This is my absolute favorite crop to grow myself compared to the store is celery. And juicing this is 
absolutely to die for. It is like heaven on earth. Uh, the only thing I would say is don't use the leaves. The leaves are really bitter and salty. Those are kind of gross. But this is just one of my absolute all-time favorite crops because of all the things you could do with it, as long as you figure out how to get it to grow in the time in your growing season, you can make a lot of stuff happen with this crop. So give it a shot. Kale, not always a crowd favorite, but this is a spectacular cut and come again crop. This is already the second time I've harvested this plant and we're gonna get, oh God, I think at least 12 bunches probably out of these four plants right now. And then we've probably already gotten about 12. And that was about two, three weeks ago. So if you do the math on that, this thing is just pumping out greens. And I know it's not always a crowd favorite, but um, some people like it. And, you know, if you are growing food for nutrition, this is one of the best. Very high in calcium, all that good stuff. I'm definitely not a nutritionist, but uh, I feel really good when I eat it. And you could saute it with eggs and garlic or just saute it with garlic and salt and olive oil and that's a really easy to die for way to eat it in my opinion i would eat that every day um but i love kale i'm a weirdo um hope that doesn't offend anybody else who is a kale lover too because you're not really weird but i am weird <clears throat> and this is uh pretty much the same way you harvest chard too so chard and kale i pretty much put in the same category you know in this little two foot area, I've got four plants. That's probably going to bring me at least 24 bunches of kale in this tiny little garden. So, uh, and I think we'll probably get one more pick if I really wanted to. It's honestly way too much for my family. Um, that's why I'm harvesting it for the farm right now. But, uh, you know, two plants is way more than enough for your family. You know, you're going to be getting... If you go through one bunch a week, you're still going to be overproducing with two plants. So it's just a bomb proof cut and come again crop. And as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing the outer stalks on the plant. Um, and these are really, really nice. This is Tuscan kale, so it's not that curly kale. But you just come grab the outer stalks just like that. And then that center part will regrow in three weeks. It'll be a whole nother bunch of kale. Um, and I don't know, that's how you see some farms that grow kale will have kale plants this tall where the stalk's completely buried because that's how you harvest it. But, you know, this is a good solid eight ounces of kale right here and um, just phenomenal nutrition and really, really high production crop for your garden that just, it's easy. I planted this once and it just keeps producing for me all season. I don't have to worry about anything else. So great cut and come again crop. <clears throat> So if you're not into leafy greens, here's another great option for you. Summer squash, basically zucchini. I just call it summer squash because it sounds fancier. Uh, but we've got three different kinds of summer squash in these two 25 foot beds. We planted this in June and we've been harvesting about 20 to 30 pounds of zucchini a week out of this bed. And if you had two plants of these in your garden, that's probably gonna be way more than enough for your family. And it doesn't take up that much space. We have, uh, let's see, we have about 20, 25 plants in each one of these beds where they're planted really close together. And if you pick the right variety, um, I believe these are Dunja, Golden Glory, and uh, one of the Patty Pan Squash, but you know, they all kind of grow about the same size. They take up a lot of space, but for that, result if you had two plants you'd be getting two to four pounds a week depending on your climate and if you're in a warmer climate than here you're going to get probably more we are in a really cold climate so that's why it takes a lot for us to get a good yield i noticed that the yields go way down whenever it's cold out but these guys are uh they're pumping right now and it's just a really good 
week in, week out, gonna produce her for you. You don't have to prune this or anything. You stick the plant in the ground or even simpler, you could just stick a seed in the ground because squash doesn't actually like to be transplanted that much. If you just stick a seed in the ground, it's gonna grow, take off. And by August at the latest, you're gonna start getting a really nice consistent supply of beautiful zucchini. Let's try and get one for you if I can find one. We did just harvest this today, so there's probably not gonna be much to pick, but. Well, they're all kind of small right now because we just harvested them. But we harvest these every other day um, to keep them really nice. This is a really small patty pan squash, but we usually let them get to about this big. But this is a delicious, you know, everybody eats zucchini at home. You know, you put this in all sorts of dishes. Um, and this is a patty pan squash. It is basically zucchini. It's just a different shape. But there's all sorts of zucchinis out there, and they all pretty much do the same thing. You don't have to get fancy with the special variety or anything. Um, we just grow these because that's what works. We have a yellow and green color, and it works really nicely. But, you know, we don't grow a whole lot of this on the farm because it's kind of hard to sell. But uh, it's just an easy producer, you know. You could grow a truckload of this your first year. You know, a lot of people end up with too much of it because you really don't want to too many plants of this because it's so overproductive and you need to keep on it. That's the only kind of drawback to this is you have to harvest it often, but um, to make it so they're not baseball bats. But even if you got a baseball bat, it's still edible. It's just you make zucchini bread or something. So really good week in, week out producer that is anybody can do this one. You don't need to be a specialized grower at all. So zucchini, summer squash, whatever you want to call it. It's a big, big producer for you. So one of the most productive herbs out there that is just bomb proof. It is really cold hardy. This stuff will last past, I bet this would be fine under 20 degrees Fahrenheit without any protection. And it doesn't bolt like ever. So it's really reliable and just continues to produce over and over and over again is parsley a lot of herbs you can do cut and come again with but they're going to have a lot more you know cilantro and dill are going to bolt on you and you have to replant those all the time but parsley you could get away with one plant in your garden and i almost guarantee maybe two if you want to if you're a really big parsley eater and you want a bunch a week you might need two plants but for as often as you're probably going to be using and eating parsley, one plant is going to be more than enough. And you don't even have to harvest a whole bunch like I do. You could literally just take a couple of stalks like this if you need some for a recipe. And this is enough for like two recipes. Most recipes call for two tablespoons or one tablespoon of parsley. And it's as long as you just take the outer stalks like we did with the kale, it keeps on growing for basically infinity. For the end of time this is a bomb proof herb um basil also is good but this one is just if you're a beginner it's so easy all you got to do is start it on time in the spring um, and it takes a while to germinate you know like celery but this one's even more productive than the celery or kale or anything it's just absolutely bomb proof um and you don't need much space at all i mean these are spaced 10 inches apart and two or three plants would be way more than enough for an entire season. And it'll go deep into the fall. I bet you could harvest this in your garden until at least Christmas, most climates. I'm gonna try that with this bed. We'll see how long it works. Wyoming's pretty cold, so uh, I don't know if I'm gonna get away with that, but I have some in the greenhouse that will be protected that will last definitely till Christmas, probably through. But I've had this last in the, uh, it was slightly heated greenhouse, but I mean, it wasn't like that heated with frost protection. We had it all winter uh, in Wyoming and we get to negative 30. So it's a really good winter crop also, but it's great in the summer. It doesn't have any problems. It's just bomb proof and it grows into this giant bush. Um, so parsley is a really good beginner herb. Um, you just got to seed it on time in about March and then you have a nice big plant to put in your garden and then just explode it. And it probably will even come back through most winters if you, uh, 
leave it in the ground, I bet it will. Um, my Wyoming, maybe not. Uh, we have really insane cold, but if you're in basically much warmer than a zone five, I bet it's pretty close to a perennial. So parsley is a must grow. All right, so you're probably familiar with this one, lettuce. So this is a whole bed of uh, head lettuce is actually what we're growing it for. We're gonna cut the whole head, but we also grow it as a cut and come again all the time. And we just plant it a little more densely. But what you could do with lettuce is you could do the exact same thing that you do with parsley, kale, celery, all those other crops. Come in and grab the whole plant like this and you could harvest the outer leaves just like this. And now you've got a whole like week's worth of salad greens right here. And that this will regrow two to three times. It really just depends on how hot your climate is um, because lettuce does like the bolt, but the variety we're growing is a Salanova, which is a very fancy lettuce. You probably don't need to grow that at home, but behind me is a bunch of regular lettuce. So you can do the exact same thing with this is an iceberg. I don't think that's going to work with iceberg, but these red lettuces, you could do the same thing. And usually they don't bolt as fast because the plant is less stressed when you harvest it that way. When we harvest it at the farm, we're using a knife and we're cutting it all and it stresses the plant a little bit more. So it usually bolts faster, but this is a technique that Charles Dowding talks a lot about on his YouTube channel, which I highly recommend you check out. Um, he harvests his salad mix all like this and um, it works great. It stresses the plant very little and you can get a lot of lettuce over a continuous amount of time. Um, and again, you don't have to harvest the whole head like I just did. You can harvest just what you need for a salad and it's just always there and you don't have to replant it as much. So replanting is a lot of work. You know, you got to seed it and transplant it. Um, and it's something that you have to keep up on mentally. So all of these techniques make it less stressful. You just come grab it when you need it. You just kind of use your garden as a, gro as a grocery store and you grab what you need frequently. And it uh, produces a lot more total food over a longer period of time. So um, lettuce is another really great cut and come again. Okay, so how much time does it actually take to make all of that happen? All of those crops happen in your garden. The actual time out of your life to make that happen is nothing, basically nothing. Okay. So to seed this celery, if you wanted to plant four seed, four celery plants, it takes you about 30 seconds. But the key is doing it March 1st, you know, at a time when most people are not thinking about gardening. If you just keep to a planting schedule, which I have in the gardening course, uh, and there's all sorts of schedules online to get this. You don't have to just get it from the gardening course, but there's, if you just plant at the right time, according to your last frost date, you can get truckloads of stuff by just sticking to that schedule. But all it takes me it, to plant four plants, to seed four plants is about 30 seconds. Put soil into your plant plugs, and then seed with a couple of seeds per cell about 30 seconds, water it in and you're done. You just wait about 20 days for it to germinate. And that goes for about the seeding process on all of these is about the same. It's just, you need to do it in March 1st for celery. You need to do it about April 7th or something for kale. You know, and this is in my climate, all of this depends on your climate and your last frost date, but it's about 30 seconds for each one of those things. And then, come your day that you're going to plant out your garden to transplant all of those plants that you've started. For me, I like to do it around the first week in June because it's way past the last frost. Everything, the soil's warm. Things are just going to grow as soon as I put them in the ground. That takes about 20 minutes, maybe, to put in the ground and then turn on your sprinkler. So it doesn't take a lot of time to make all this happen. And then once you've planted them, and all you got to do is make sure they're watered every week. That takes about a minute to turn on your, your sprinkler. And then you wait an hour to turn it off. You know, it's not that much time. You really don't need to spend that much time 
growing this stuff. I mean, the harvesting is going to take you the longest probably. And that takes no time either. You know, I just harvested a little bit of probably enough parsley for your meal. That took me about 30 seconds. Um, the lettuce takes about 30 seconds. So the point I'm making is I didn't actually count how, mu how long it takes because I think it's so such a small time. It doesn't really matter that much. If you build your garden the right way in the no-dig style that we go over in the course, and Charles Dowding goes over that on his YouTube channel, you shouldn't be spending much time on weeds, and you're just going to be basically planting and harvesting, which is exactly what I try to do on the farm. The farm only makes money by planting and harvesting and seeding, planting, and harvesting, basically. So we want to spend as little time as possible doing things like weeding, pruning, stuff like that. And, you know, if you build your garden that way, it's even easier. You could just forget about it, basically, and just come grab stuff when you need it. Um, it's not quite that simple, but it really shouldn't take a lot of time to grow a lot of food. And these little tricks kind of help increase your yields with very like with a lot less effort right so the same amount of effort that it takes me to plant a head of cabbage is what it takes for me to plant a head of celery but if i harvest that celery two or three times i just got basically two or three times the amount of food for the same amount of effort and in a in the same space that's the key detail you don't need a lot of space either my whole farm is profitable because of that strategy. We try and get two or three crops a year on every bed on the farm. And we also really like to focus on crops that grow, grow back again so we don't have to replant. So the, everything I went over in this video is pretty much a one plant thing. And then we, well, sometimes we do replant depending on if it's in a greenhouse, but we plant it and then we just keep harvesting and harvesting and harvesting. And that's how we do really, really well. And you could do the same thing in your garden. So if you want to learn a lot more about this kind of stuff and building your garden in a way where you're not stressed about it, you pretty much set it up, you start your seeds on time, you plant it, and you keep to a watering schedule, and then just come harvest when you need to, and it's not a big stress ball, and especially if you have a 40-hour-a-week job and you have kids, highly recommend you check out my gardening course in the link in the description. It's seven hours of videos where I explain how to set up a no-dig garden, how to water, how to set up your irrigation, how to manage weeds when they do happen, because they will happen. And I go over drip irrigation, lots of specific crop things, depending on which crops you want to grow, how to select your crops, how to plan your garden, because I think that's probably the hardest thing to explain is the crop planning. That timing is how you can make it really stress-free. Once you get good at that, you can just grow whatever you want. Um, if you're interested, check it out. Link in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video and you got some value out of it. If you did, please like and subscribe and share this video with anybody you th who, thinks, who you think would benefit from it. And I will see you in the next one.